All right, so what we're going to do next is uh, talk about the sexual life cycle of uh, sexually reproducing organisms. Now, uh, this sexual life cycle uh, has just a few hallmarks, uh, the first of which being conception. So when the organism uh, was conceived, that first cell, uh, then we have meiosis, which is the production of new gametes or sex cells. Uh, and then finally we have uh, fertilization or uh, reproduction. Wow, horrible handwriting. Uh, okay, so uh, what we'll do is tie it back here. Um, we'll have uh, an egg that is haploid, one end, combined with uh, a sperm that is also haploid or one end. So they will combine to form the zygote, which is now uh, 2N uh, or diploid. Oops, Let me put my N in there. Now, uh, this zygote will then uh, undergo mitosis and uh, grow and develop. So here we have growth and development uh, and uh, as is how I've uh, expressed it to my own children, uh, you finish grad school and uh, get a stable job and all these good things and you end up becoming uh, this uh, adult that has reached uh, sexual maturity and is then ready for reproduction, okay? So uh, at that point, uh, the adult organism is able to have germ cells undergo meiosis uh, and produce uh, these gametes. And uh, then if they find someone that uh, shares their interests, they also like the colts and the cubs and things of that nature, uh, then the other person's gametes can then combine with theirs uh, in the process of fertilization and reproduction, at which point you create a brand new uh, diploid zygote and start the whole process uh, all over again. Now, what's fascinating is that uh, while you know, the hallmarks are similar, uh, the events that occur vary uh, by uh, type of organism. Now, um, animals are uh, the most straightforward in terms of sexual life cycle and uh, certainly the most familiar to us. But what we want, we want to keep track of is the fact that regardless of type of organism, all the uh, sexual life cycles have a couple of basic features. They all have uh, meiosis occur and they all initially have uh, fertilization uh, occur. You know, what happens in between uh, will vary slightly. Now it all starts with uh, again conception so uh, during fertilization you have uh, a zygote that is created and the zygote is diploid or 2N. Now uh, through the process of mitosis or cell division, we end up creating an adult that is again still 2N or diploid. Now some of the cells, the germ cells of that adult uh, will undergo meiosis, have their numbers reduced by half and you end up creating uh, gametes that are now 1N or have just uh, one set of chromosomes. Then those gametes combine with the gametes of another organism. And you start the process all over again by creating a new uh, diploid zygote. Now, a slight variation on this is seen in other organisms. Um, what we see in plants 
and some algae is what's called an alternation, that's an R, of generations. What they basically do is alternate between uh, diploid and haploid organisms. So again, the hallmarks are the same. You have meiosis, you have fertilization. Now, uh, let's again start it off with the uh, creation of this diploid zygote. So a 2N zygote, again, grows through mitosis to create uh, a diploid adult, so it's 2N. Now this diploid re adult is referred to as a sporophyte, okay? Now a portion of uh, this diploid adult, or one specific segment of the diploid adult, is under going to uh, undergo meiosis and uh, create haploid spores. Now this is what is released uh, on the underside of ferns. Now these spores will then grow uh, through mitosis into another uh, adult plant. Now this adult is haploid, so it's just one in, and it's called the gametophyte, which is appropriate because it will ultimately uh, end up producing the gametophyte. So the sporophyte produces the spores, the gametophyte we know will end up uh, through this time mitosis, since we already have a haploid organism, through mitosis it'll end up creating the gametes. Now if the uh, fern can find another plant, uh, again, shares its similar interests, they can combine their gametes to uh, then create a diploid zygote that will uh, again uh, renew this cycle. Now the third type uh, of cycle is seen in uh, fungi and some algae. And again this is another uh, alternation of generations uh, somewhat like what we see in plants. Okay, remember the hallmarks? There is meiosis and there is fertilization. Process starts the same, gametes combine, you have a zygote uh, that is diploid. I always forget that N. Now what's sort of fascinating about this is that the zygote itself, so the single cell uh, brand new or newly conceived organism itself undergoes meiosis. So the 2N zygote, that cell, undergoes meiosis to create uh, haploid cells. Now, uh, these haploid cells then undergo mitosis. So again, you're creating a larger haploid or organism here that creates a haploid adult structure. And then uh, again, through cell division, or through mitosis, uh, this haploid adult ends up creating haploid gametes. Oops. So, um, one fungi can find another. They can combine their haploid gametes and then through uh, the magic of fertilization, again, create a diploid zygote and continue the process. Now, uh, please recall, to maintain the uh, chromosome number between generations, uh, there is this alternation of meiosis and fertilization, regardless of the uh, species. So again, to make sure there is the appropriate number of chromosomes uh, in offspring, 
uh, you have this combination of, of meiosis and fertilization. Now events may vary, but in every case, the life cycle begins with a diploid zygote. Now, uh, eventually the cells undergo meiosis uh, directly, as in the case of uh, animals, to produce uh, gametes, or to produce haploid organisms that will eventually produce the ha haploid gametes through mitosis, as seen in uh, plants and some algae and fungi and protists. Now in all cases, the haploid gametes will join uh, during fertilization to create uh, a diploid zygote and uh, once again uh, start the cycle anew.